you can get away with playing bad for like a quarter. But if you're playing bad against Golden State, Clay can hit you with like 37 in yeah. one uh, quarter. No, he's not doing that again. No, he's not. Yeah, he's not, not, not. The main thing that I take away from Brown, when he passes the free throw line, you it's like nine times out of ten he's going to turn the ball over. RJ Barrett sparked the Celtics after game after the first game of the season. That's the, a the highlight moment. of like RJ's whole uh, career now. Dominant player that like of all time that we've seen to Shaq. Shaq yeah. and, but uh, like Will Chamberlain. Well, close. Chamberlain, sure, but it's like, <laughs> but like Celtics and six, and that's it. Cue the intro. Catches, puts up the three. Long go. Rebound. Box. Head over in this direction. Gone to three. We are back, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Cam's Corner. Back with Jay and Tom. We've seen them before, guys. What's going on? How's it been since the last time we talked? Been doing great, man. You know, riding high right now. Riding high. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the Celtics. Now, Eastern Conference champs. Jason Tatum won the MVP, the first Larry Bird MVP, I think. And uh, we're going to be recapping the finals, what we think is going to happen in the finals. But first, obviously, you can tell by the shirts, we're going to start off with the Celtics. Game 7. Um, how that kind of ended and everything. And what I want to start with is probably you guys want to talk about too. Is Jimmy Butler's final shot? I want to. Well, I want to start off with his final shot in the fourth quarter. One. There, so when I look at it, obviously a ton of people have talked about it. There was 18 seconds left on the shot clock, right? And everyone's been talking about how how Steph Curry always oh, changed the game. This, 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 right? If you look at the replay and look at what was going on, it was a three on three, right? Jimmy Butler's Al Horford's playing him, right? It's a mismatch. They make the bucket to, to tie it. There's still probably 16 seconds left on the shot clock or game clock. And if that, uh, Miami's going to foul regardless. So the Celtics are going to go back and forth with the free throw line and things like that. Yeah. So do you think him taking that shot and missing or going to the rim and tying up the game and going back and forth was the right idea? Like, what Do you, what, do you think that was a good shot is what I'm Personally, to? I had no problem with Jimmy's shot. Like, he's the best player on that team. He earned that shot. The way I see it, like, they're not there without him, and they're not even in that game without his scoring. And he played every single minute of that game, didn't sit one time. Like, he played... Yeah, he played 48 he minutes. He played full 48, 48 minutes. minutes. So, so, you're doing that. It's a game seven in a hard, hard-fought hard series. You probably don't want to go into overtime. You're thinking, win the game now. And yeah. that's... If you go back to earlier in the game, he takes that same shot pull up three from the right wing, and he drills it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wait, so when was that? Earlier in game in the, seven. In game yeah, seven. He, he comes down the court, right side, coming down right wing, he pulls up in transition, and he knocks it down. Mm-hmm. So it's like a shot that he can make. It's a good shot. Yeah. I thought it was the right play, but it's all in Yeah, I don't – the Heat wouldn't have been in that series without him. Mm-hmm. So God, no. The team basically revolves around him because Bam wasn't giving you anything for the whole series, really. Um, like, when he was coming down the court, he had Struess and I think Oladipo wide open, but I don't think he even saw them. I just think he came down the court as, like, my team. I'm going to try to win this now because mm. I don't think he wanted overtime because they shouldn't even have been in that spot. Celtics up, what, yeah. 13 with, like, three and a half minutes left. God, I don't sure. even know how they got in that spot, but Jimmy willed them, like, back into the game. Like, I wouldn't trust anyone else on the Heat to, like, take that shot. Even Harrow, anyone else. For, for the game, I'd rather have Jimmy Butler either win or lose me that game. And I thought it was a pretty good shot, too. Like, I, yeah. I, that's not his game. He had the right? mismatch on Al, and, and, and yeah, Al was and playing off, people, too. Yeah, I get people saying, like, drive the ball. It's Al, it's Al Horford, and he's backpedaling. But, like, Al's not a bad interior defender. Yeah, that's like, he can was, play defense. And Jimmy got a good, clean look. Like, he got his shot off. And if he you hits that, I mean? we're not having the same talk right now. Yeah, yeah. no, if, yeah. Because anything that. could have happened because, like, they would have been up one and we'd have to yeah. come down the court and yeah. score. But I think the thing that you take away from that the most is that you finally, I mean, I, I don't know, if put the, I guess you could say put together a whole game, but you closed out a game that was crucial. One, yeah. and you that you had the lead in. Because remember in, like, uh, the Bucks series, you guys were up, like, almost the whole game. What was it, game 
five it was that you guys lost? You had to- Oh, no, it was, was in Milwaukee three. three. Yeah, it was no, game-, game three. In Milwaukee. You could have yeah. stole one, right. That was that was the one. But, like, yeah. I think that's the main thing that we're going to have, like, Southern's going to have to focus on going against Golden State is closing games because mm-hmm. Golden State's going to be a tough team. Very true, yeah. And if you can steal one in Golden State, it's going to be – they're going to make it a series. Yeah, and the Heat team isn't, like, the team you're about to face because, like, Golden State can no. score 20 points yeah. in three minutes. The Heat don't have the half-court offense to do that. So it's, like, you can get away with playing bad for, like, a quarter. But if you're playing bad against Golden State, Clay can hit you with, like, 37 in yeah. one uh, quarter. So. Oh, he's not doing that again. No, he's not. Yeah, he's not, 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 not in the finals. finals. But, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, they have shooters around Steph Curry. Yeah, and, they have the players capable to do – yeah, Insane and I just think, like, like how they ball. ended that game with being up 13 with three and a half left and that Jimmy Bow having a chance to win it. Like, you you say they closed it out, but, like, as, a, as like, Celtics fans, like, I don't feel good about closing that out. No. we had to lead the whole game. By a like, large but, but, margin, but, like, too. But, like, we, like, didn't feel safe at all. Like, throughout, like, the whole game, we're up 15. I'm like, right. I don't feel good right now. Like, we yeah. need to get up 20 to, like, not feel good. I was texting you, like, it was, like, Wow, it was half. I, what would have been down at, at half? How many? It was they're a up, it, they're up six. single digit, right? Yeah, I, I was telling Jay, I was like, I'm not comfortable with the Celtics lead if it's not more than like 15. I, points. I, wasn't, either. I wasn't even comfortable at 15. It's like, not. It's yeah. not even like because we've seen them play like so good, and then we see them just like have like a bad like third quarter, like second quarter, and that ruins the whole game. And yeah. then they'll come back and like they'll play like good, but like them having the lead and then almost choking that lead to get to the finals, it's like that's worrisome when you're going to face an experienced team like Golden State, who's been here, mm-hmm. done that. That's yeah. it. Yeah. What do you think? That's another, that's another reason why I think Jimmy Butler's shot was a good shot. You know, because, like, Miami did not smell a lead that whole game. Mm-hmm. Like, they got close in, like, certain instances. Like, they closed out the first half of well. They cut it to six when they were down, like, 15 at, um, like, two minutes left. Going into like halftime, they closed the gap. But when like that little, I think it was three thirty left in the fourth, where we were up like thirteen. We have like the Celtics have like mental lapses where they just get like stagnant mm-hmm. on offense and they don't run sets. They play iso ball, and that can get them into trouble with like the Warriors because he said they can rattle off twenty points, and if you're playing stagnant, you're gonna fall behind quickly. You see that a lot. Mainly with Brown and Tatum. And the main thing that I take away from Brown going in that, like you said, that iso ball, is like when when he passes the free throw line, you it's like nine times out of ten he's going to turn the ball over. But he has a he has a good mid-range game off yeah. a couple, like three dribbles, like a, like a little quick like uh, dribble combo, and he's got a shot. And that's going, like I said, that's going in mm-hmm. a lot of the times. But once he drives and passes the free throw line, he's just out of control. When he wants to drive, that's... That's how I've seen him play. Well, I, didn't, I didn't see that very much in like the Milwaukee series. I thought he played great in the Milwaukee series. I saw it most in the Heat series. Yeah, but the Heat, the Heat are like that scrappy team where they play really good defense and they play defense as like a collective group. They're always in a passing lane. Yeah. They're trying to force turnovers. So like with a team like Golden State, I don't see Brown having as much trouble actually getting to the rim. You know what I mean? Like I see him finishing yeah, no. way better right. against Golden State than he did against Miami. So who's who do you think is gonna be playing Tatum in the Golden State series? Wiggins. Wiggins and yeah. who's, who's on Brown? Clay. Probably Clay. You think so? Yeah. Which I and think then, that favors us offensively. And then you have Steph Curry on Marcus Smart, and that's a matchup for yeah. us. Even I think are we going into that now? Because I was gonna talk about. We, it yeah, we could shift. That's a perfect segue to get into it. I mean, we kind of touched upon the whole. We didn't really say the whole like Miami series. I mean, we can kind of end off with that. How do you think the Miami series went as a whole? Because 20-point losses for both teams in the first four games is kind of the, crazy. For the series, I didn't even learn anything because every game was like, we win by 20, we lose by 20, we win yeah. by 20, lose by 20. And it's like the last two games were like close, but mm-hmm. like I didn't learn anything about like the Celtics team. Like I knew we were a good team, we can close out games, but us having to lead the whole game to like close out like that, it's just, I think we're going to win, but it's just, it's very worrisome facing a team led by... Steph Curry. Right. Yeah, it, it doesn't give you a good feeling. Like, it, yeah. it, I mean, it sits, it doesn't sit well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? No, I, I completely agree. I felt the same way because, like, like he said, you don't really, you don't really learn anything. Like, yeah, they lost by twenty, but then they won by twenty, and then they went back and forth. And then, like you said, those last two games, yeah. Butler had eighty-two points combined in both of those games, and mm-hmm. Miami still lost the series. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are they going to allow Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and like Wiggins and Poole and, and Draymond to do? 
with a team that has no finals experiences at all. Al Horford's been to 146 playoff games, has zero NBA finals experience, while this team has been to eight, or like, what was it, eight or six? Six, six in the last eight, eight years. Six in the last eight years, yeah. that was the stat, and they won three. You know what I mean? And I don't know, I just, I feel like they, they've proven themselves because they've done it. Like, they've they've done it. They're here. They've yeah, obviously proven they themselves. And you can see it game in and game out. Even though we didn't really truly learn anything, you yeah. see the fight and you see the, the play style that Ime, Adoka, like, yeah. fr- first year coach has, has put into them. You know but I, mean? I think Ime said it after game seven. We still have more to prove. Yep. Like, we still have, like, we're here. We got here. But that's not the ultimate goal. The yeah. ultimate goal is to win a championship and get over that hump. Like, they finally did it. They got to the finals. But now that they're here, they have more to prove. And I feel like they, they reacted like that. Like, oh, you know. Screw that! Like you know, they wanted to celebrate. Yeah. Just because, like we just said, they had never been there before. Like they, that's never that. happened. They went to the last, or like not the last three, but like they've been to three Eastern Conference Finals. Almost that whole mm-hmm. team, the same team basically. Yeah. And they 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 couldn't get out yeah, of. Think the East. about think about how the season started, like eleventh in the East, yep. twenty one and twenty two at one point, and then into the ultimate turnaround. Nobody thought they were going to be in the finals this year when they were at like eleven in the. I didn't think that. No. I hadn't. I. My finals were not even in like my horse. I tweeted that RJ Barrett sparked the Celtics after game after the first game of the season. He's like that. <laughs> Sent them home packing and then they were like, That was no. the lowest point Leave being it. a Celtics Leave it to fan. The Knicks, no. man. That was the lowest point. <laughs> they were like shot. he was like, that that ignited the fire. That's the like, highlight of like RJ's whole uh, career now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't not high moments. Yeah. Praying for a comeback season, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. Anyways, getting off the next, <laughs> we always get on a next tangent. Now we were just saying Golden State. Um, do you want to look at Golden State as a whole, or what, what do you want to talk about about Golden State, like specifically? I, I just think I think every matchup, like, matchup wise, who's... yeah, matchup wise with it. Like I think yeah. the matchup with like Draymond Green, it's like they can switch. And like we can score off them because Draymond's not the same defender as he used to. Like Clay Thompson doesn't guard as he used to. Looney, like Tatum's in a sauce. Looney, <laughs> um, Jordan Poole off the bench. Like we can switch off him. Steph Curry. Like I think on the offensive end, if we're playing our best and not going ISO like we have, mm-hmm. I think we match up extremely well to them, and I think we can beat them in six games. But then on the other hand, you have Golden State where you don't if we don't play our game, they're gonna blow us off the court. Yeah, you have to be on like, your A game one, like you said, and like. The main thing, like you just said about Kev- uh, Kevon Looney, the only reason why he dominated in the last series was because he was playing against Dwight Powell. Yeah, like and, Dwight and, and Powell and is the worst Burkans. center in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. He's, like, <laughs> he's going to play well, but Brown, Clay is a good matchup. Smart, Curry is a good matchup too because I think Smart can exploit him on the offensive end, like getting down low and then kicking out yep. because mm-hmm. they're going to have to help because Steph Curry can't guard Smart at all. Yeah. So... I just think if we're shooting the ball like we can because we're a top three, three-pointing shooting team in the whole NBA, we can beat this team. Yeah, I think it comes down to the Celtics playing their brand of basketball. And like If they don't get away from the game plan and if they lock in defensively, because it always starts, for the Celtics, it starts on the defensive end. Yeah, like yeah. If they get stops and they get out in transition, that's how they got up in Game 7 on Miami anyway. They had, I think, 13 fast break points in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. So they got out and they ran on Miami and... That's where, like, you saw them exploit, like, matchups in, like, not not half-court setting, but in the break. So when you get, like, Tatum and Brown going downhill and, like, even Smart, like, he, people don't give Smart enough credit because he's gotten a lot better as a facilitator. Like, he can push the ball and not only get to the rim and finish, but make that extra pass and kick out and find the open guy where the ball is supposed to go Mm -hmm. to keep the flow of the offense. But they can't get away from that down the stretch of games because Golden State will take advantage. Yeah. And they will close out games. Like, it's... I was going to say earlier, everybody knows who Golden State is. We've seen it for how many years yeah. now. We, we know just who don't they know are. who the Celtics are because they never not, – not that we don't know who they are, but we don't know who they are in the finals. What are they going to Yeah, I think they've made, finals? like, a name for themselves this year, I think, because everybody was saying trade Brown. you got to split up Tatum Brown. They can't work together. I think they've made people – they put doubt. They yeah. put themselves on the map, and they made people realize that they can win yeah. with the team that they have. They have enough talent. They have the guys. But also, like, with the whole Kevon Looney thing, like, I think he can hold his own. But, again, like, we have Grant. I mean, we have uh, Rob Williams, Al Horford, 
like we talked about. But even Grant Williams is a good matchup for Kevon Looney. Yeah. Like I, I like Grant's a very good defender. Is he like is Kevon Looney like that much taller than him? I think no? Kevon Looney's like six eight, six nine. Grant same thing. Really? Oh, and Grant's okay. like six six, six seven with like uh, shoes on. But he's oh, like a it? big body line yeah, guy. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't six, think yeah. Looney is like. Shouldn't I just thought Looney was like a seven footer. No, no, no. And like he, he scores his points off like rebounds. Like he's yeah, not scoring yeah. in the post. He didn't really have a hook shot. So it's like yeah, you can't. And, and can can Kevon Looney guard the three? Because if if Grant's hitting like. Like, yeah, I, don't, I don't think Looney's gonna be in the game though. Like that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like I think Looney will play in this like series eighteen. Just if that's the match. matchup, yeah, yeah. And like I think Rob will play like big minutes too. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe he'll play, but that's another matchup like we can exploit. Because if we start getting downhill and we like, if we're hitting our threes, like we make that extra pass, we start hitting our threes, and like we kind of space out their defense. We have that lob game to Rob Williams. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just that's don't like that how Rob have. looked last time. Like we played like in. Game seven, Rob did not look good at all. Oh. Like he wasn't moving well. Like he needs to be healthy for us to like, mm -hmm. beat this team. That's He's why a big factor on this team. I think us not closing out Miami sooner is gonna play a factor in the series because of like health reasons. Yeah. Warriors got to sit and they got to rest a little bit. So game one, they could come out on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they could be rusty too. Yeah. It's it's just, you gotta see how it goes. Like we we don't have enough information right now to just like like predict how the series is going to go you can say like what you think but nobody really knows until it happens right and i think you're going to determine that through game one like not maybe like the entire series but you can tell where it's going to go yeah. throughout maybe a couple games mm -hmm. and the main thing like we, i said it earlier with the celtics is they need to win on the road they need they i think it's like mandatory that they get a win on the road because if you look back at the series besides miami did they win any home games in miami Duh, they the, won. Did they game, win? You mean uh, at home? At home. Yeah, they won, won uh, game four. Game four, and then the only home win they had prior to the or after the Brooklyn sweep was game seven against Milwaukee. No, we split with and them. Then, oh, they, they, yeah, since yeah. it was seven. I mean, they, they, we, they, we, they we struggle. We what, haven't been. We say. haven't been. You're right. We haven't been a good home team in the yeah, playoffs. Yes. but we have been road warriors. Like right. that's kind of like their mentality. They don't. I don't know why they do that to themselves, but they put their backs against the wall all the time. But they, they like come through for each other. Like they play as a team when they need to, and they get the job done, which is like new this season. But like it's like a breath of fresh air because they didn't do that before. And oh, now like they right. kind of are they gonna come out now that they don't have home court advantage? Do can do you think they can do you think they can tie up the series going well, into the game? I think three, guys, like Celtics fans, we're just hoping for a split. Like I think we can win either game one or game two. Are you I, confident with the? You confident with? Yeah, that? I, I, I think I think, I think we can split really? just how we've played on the road so far. So mm -hmm. if that's what we're hoping for, we know we're not going to go there and win two games. Like mm -hmm. that's asking for too much. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like experienced team like this, they're not losing two games at home. No, so right. it's either we steal game one or we steal game two. Like. Would I love it if we went into Golden State and won two straight games? Absolutely. Yeah, who but like right. you can't like just expect that because like you said, they're an experienced team, like they've been there before. But I wanna see from the Celtics and at least game one or game two, a little bit of desperation. Like when they play like I said, when they play like their backs against the wall, that's when they're at their best. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if they come out and they're like, We need to win so we can go back and protect home court, if they go if they go out and they prove they can do that in Golden State, I see this series going very well for them. Scenario, Celt uh, yeah, Celtics down 2-0, Warriors take two games. Where do you think I that series even be, goes? I wouldn't it? even be shocked if something like that happened. Kind of I don't think it will. Stomach. I don't think it will, but like we're not going down 3-0 versus this team. That's what I know. No, so. I, don't, I don't think they'll go down 3-0, but I, and I, am I confident that the Warriors are going to go up 2-0? No, but I, do I think it's a possibility and it might happen? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. like, everyone's, like, like, you just said, like, them getting rest, too. It's, like, that's not always a good thing to have, like, this much time off. Like, they haven't yeah. played in, what, like, two, like, a week and a half or, like, a week? Mm -hmm. Like, the Warriors, yeah. And, 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 and like, I don't want to, like, like discredit what they've done either, but, like, they haven't really faced a team like the Celtics yet. Like, they were facing, like, not good teams. Yeah. Like, the first round they had faced who? Jokic. Was, uh, Denver, yeah. and, like, Jokic was the only, like, viable option. They played two teams that have a superstar and no help around yeah, them. Yeah, and, like and then and and then Luka. and then Ja got hurt too when they uh, faced them. Like uh, Memphis, like their mm -hmm. team was hurt. And then Luca, like he's playing with nobody. He's like Literally Finney, Dory Smith, like Jalen Brunson. Like he's not 
that's not good competition to get to the finals. Like, I'm not taking anything away, like, what they did. But, yeah. yeah. Because people are making excuses for us, too. Because well, like, we Spencer did like, what trash can. Like, like, everyone's, uh, yeah, like, everyone said, like, the Nets, like, okay, like, we beat them, but we were supposed to. But, like, when that series was happening, like, people A lot of people know. picked like, the I, Nets. I said that we weren't going to, like, beat the Nets. Almost that, that same, that it was Celtics almost that seven. same exact team that beat them in five. But without Kyrie. Well, we didn't well, no, we, we had, we had, uh, he, uh, we had Brown okay. out for that series. Brown right. out for that series, Rob out for that series, and Kemba didn't play last year. It was literally Tatum so versus you, the world. Yeah, okay. it was Tatum and Evan Fournier. And, but they had Harden last year. I went to game four last year, and I seen Harden drop a 20-20 game, which was literally, like, it was the most beautiful brand of basketball I've ever seen played. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, if that Nets team stayed together and they were healthy, they were scary. I mean, if the vaccine mandate wasn't a thing, they probably would like would have won the whole thing this year. Yeah, they were my pick. If they were healthy, yeah. they were my pick. Yeah, I, I, I've been saying it a hundred times. If Kyrie never came back, those last seven game stretches, I don't think they're gonna they were gonna even make the play in. No, they were definitely they were gonna make the play. Or not make the play. Or they would have definitely won no. the play. If if Kyrie, no, I would if say Kyrie wasn't back, because they wouldn't be a top uh, eight seed. They'd be yeah, like, they would have been. Yeah, you're right. But I think I think they still get the job. I don't know. That like, team was dude. They were bonds. struggling without Kyrie. Kyrie comes back and he's dropping like 60, 40, 30. Like he's he yeah, was just going. Yeah, they did need they, Yeah, they did need Kyrie to come back because, like, you could just send a double or like triple team at Durant and then nobody else dude, can create. He got Bruce Brown strapped up against the Celtics. Tatum. That set the tone for the whole rest of the Celtics' journey. Like I'm a Durant guy till I die. He got put in a jail, dude. It was it was bad. Like it was bad. We, you've never seen. Like, he was missing like that, shots though. that you like normally like see him make. I think the Celtics legit got in his head. Like he, wherever he went on the court, somebody was like hitting him. He was coming off the screen. Somebody was in his grill. Like he, like he's a great player. Like one of the best of all time. But like he does not. Like respond well to that shit sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you think if Steph wins a ring, he's better than Durant all time? Better than Durant all time? I think he's better than Durant all time already. When when I was on the first time, be like ranked our top fifteen players ever. I think I had Durant one spot over Curry. I think really? I'm gonna I'm keep it. Spot. I think I'm gonna keep Curry. Durant there until if Curry wins the whole thing this year, then I'll put him over. But I'd still take I think Durant I over Curry. Do you yeah. think? I do you think? I, I was watching. I was watching ESPN and uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith said that. Um, Steph Curry has a better resume, but as like a player, like Durant's like so much better. Than yeah, him. it's like it's like. But like, it, it, there's one thing. There's one thing like to compare that. the player, and compare what they've accomplished. It's, and that, that's what that's what every that's what player everyone player gets. That's different. what everyone gets. And like, he's accomplishing that like his size too. Like in the league, it goes like it goes by like what you accomplish exactly in the too somewhat. Yeah. But like yeah, if you're going by like just. Like street ball, like who am I gonna pick up first? Like I'm probably picking picking Durant, up like, Durant yeah. first. Well, but like that's yeah. like I don't like that. Like so I, I, I don't really either. But Colin Coward said that Steph Curry is the most influential player of all time, and I I agree with him to an extent because when he was talking about like Jordan, he was saying that Jordan was the just the best player for the longest amount of time. Like he didn't physically change the game. Like like. But I I don't agree with that. I think he I think he did change the game. I don't agree. in his own way. You know I what I'm saying? I think he definitely changed the game. Just like I, LeBron. I don't think, I don't think I agree with he was the best player for the longest amount of time. I think LeBron's been the no, best. No 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 no. I'm saying like in in his. I think LeBron's the greatest player of all time too. My we said it last time. I I, I think really he's didn't choose the longest. Yeah, but yeah. no, I'm I'm he's he meant like the longest player, like the greatest player of all time, like in his like generation oh, until yeah. LeBron. Mm -hmm. So. You know, once LeBron came a couple years into the league, then we're realizing, all right, this guy's the greatest player of all time. And then that that was 18 years down the line. You know what I mean? So he means, like, in that time span, and LeBron too. But, like, Curry, we talked about it earlier with Jimmy Butler. If Steph Curry didn't change the game the way he did, is Butler taking that shot or is he going one-on-one -on -one with Horford to the basket? You know what I mean? It's like it's a completely different game if, if Steph Curry didn't influence the game the way he did with the three-point shot. I agree, but I don't think... Steph Curry being the player he is changes Jimmy Butler's decisions on the court. Like I don't think you can like no, that but it changes the, it changes the game and how you play like how you play view it. and view it. Yeah, but like I don't think no matter like just like the game of basketball, I think that's a good shot. Like I think that's a makeable shot. Like you're, but was that a like, shot you would as, take as before hoop, Curry like, would come into the league though? Think about like, like would you see guys doing that? Would you see guys just pulling up on a fast that, break? Bro. Like there's people who are coming out after him. They're like doing the same thing. It's like yeah, like people are still, shooting like, from. There's still like a Trey, Dame, uh, Lillard, Dame Lillard, like I don't like yeah, Luka. like Trey was after like Curry. 
Yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, there's people, like, doing like, that. Yeah. I know he was after, and, like, Curry started the wave of, like, shooting, like, deep threes, like, getting your shot off, all that stuff. But, like, I don't think you can correlate Steph Curry being the player that he is, no matter, like, how great he is, with, like, the actions of other NBA players. Yeah, I think the three-pointer would have evolved either way besides Steph Curry. Like, I think it's a big part of the game now. Even, like, analytics say now, like, you take more threes, like, you win the game. It's, yeah. like, I think that would have happened over time. Like, yeah, like, no one was thinking of shooting it from half court, but he's so good that he can. Like, I don't think, just because he's the best at it, I don't think he yeah. changed the game in a sense that people wouldn't, like, Jimmy Butler wouldn't take that shot if Steph Curry didn't yeah. shoot a deep three. Like, that's, like, that's... Yeah, like, but that's not how, that's not how, like, they, how I'm looking at it, at least. It's, like, obviously, like, I agree with you 100% that the game is going to evolve over time, and then the game's going to evolve over time, and, um... Like, that, that three, that's, that's going to come. But is it going to come as quick one and as, like, unique as Curry? Like, obviously, no one's going to be able to do what Steph Curry did and how he does it. No, we said and we earlier, haven't... like, there's not going to be another Steph Curry. Yeah. Like, that's just, like, you don't see that. You don't see that kind of talent mm-hmm. every, like, day. Like, that's, like. So, once in a life, like, once in a lifetime, like, talent. Like, gener- LeBron James. That's a generational yeah. player. Like, Kevin Durant's a generational player. Like, LeBron James is a generational player. Um, Curry, yes. Luca, I think, will get to that point where, like, he is a generational Giannis player. Giannis, too. Absolutely Giannis. You don't see a Giannis on the seven foot dribbling the ball going coast to coast. Exactly. Giannis may be the best of all time now. No. <laughs> I think, I think, no. I'd say he is. I'd say he is. Not he right be. now. I think what dude, separates Giannis. He, he, will, he can be, and he probably will get there one day. He's, you can't say that right but now. But what, se- what, se- listen, 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 listen. what separates Giannis, obviously, from a, no. an average seven-footer is his speed and his dominance. Like, we have the only dominant, like, true dominant player that like of all time that we've seen is Shaq. Shaq. Yeah. But, yeah. like, Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain, sure. But, Psych. but like, <laughs> that's the wrong was Shaq, number. Was Shaq going coast-to-coast coast up the full court, like, Dude, he has. He has. Not like Giannis. Not like Giannis. No. not like Giannis. And Shaq didn't have a mid range game. He couldn't dribble the ball. Like, but Giannis, Giannis isn't even considered a center. He's considered a small forward or a power forward. Power forward. He's, like, he's like a basketball player. Yeah, he's like either. an athletic. He's like an athletic wing that doesn't have a jump shot. But like, he has a three now. Yeah, I don't think he has. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't really show off. Line too. He can shoot from the free throw line. Yeah, but he didn't really show I think off his he's three. Adding that stuff to his bag, I just don't think it's. He didn't show off his yet. three in the playoffs. Like. Great. In the, I mean, uh, regular season, yeah, but like. I mean, he had like. I mean, he averaged like threes. thirty-five, so it's like, does he really need a three-pointer? No, I don't think. He no, does need but a if he pointer. if he could shoot no, a consistent three-pointer, he'd, he'd be yeah, no, lethal. Like, imagine Giannis onto the Kumpo with a Steph Curry jumper. Yeah, <laughs> that no, that's is just dummy. Never see that. That is just could. dummy. That, that could be like the closest next, thing to that is like, Durant. <laughs> I mean. Not not a curry jump shot, but he's no. a seven footer that can score the ball at will. Yeah, but even then, like he doesn't have Giannis's like size and strength. And da- yeah, like, right. That's no, why, that's why like, he struggled against the Celtics. Mm-hmm. If you want, like, like going back to like the point about Jimmy Butler, like Jimmy Butler is his own player. I think he shoots that shot no matter what. I think he knew it was a good shot coming down, and he was like, "I'm either I'm gonna live with myself if I make this. We're going on. If we if I if I miss, then it's on me. Like it's his team. Like he should make that decision." Because he's his own player. I think every hooper knows, like, every basketball player is their own player. Like, yeah, they take stuff from different guys, but, like, they all have their own games and they yeah. all have their own, like, pace. Yep. And I think the best ones master their pace just differently. Fluently. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody does it differently. Like, but they, like, the ones that show their greatness all the time, like Curry and Giannis, like, they master their pace. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And, like you said, it's just it's generational. So it's like we say, oh, we're never gonna see this kind of player again. Like we said, look, when people said back then against Jordan, but like, look at LeBron. Like, but, but like, are you gonna see someone like Steph Curry? About, about Jordan, look at Cur- look at Kobe. Like that yeah. was his mirror. Yeah, that was literally his yeah. mirror. And like longevity, Kobe played more than Michael did, yeah, and so Le- LeBron did too. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So but it's like, like that doesn't make them greater. Than no, it, no, it doesn't. I think, I'm, I'm, I think what they have done, like you can make a case for it. Like I think you could make a case for saying like Kobe is the greatest. Do I think that? No. Mm-hmm. But like you can make a case for it. People might call you crazy, but like you can still like. And a lot of people, a lot of have. people we know, barely even have them top ten, which That's, is that nuts is to me. Insane is insane to, to think about and. 
I saw one list. Crazy. I saw one list that had Oscar Robinson over Shaq. Was Corey. nine. Yeah, he was no. nine. He was oh, nine, right? Like, bro, that's so disrespectful. Like, bro, I, I, I can't listen to Like, you're going to tell me that Kobe heads. Bryant's not better than Bill Russell? Come on. <laughs> like I'm saying. Bro. bro. Will Chamberlain. Bill Russell we're played Celtics when there was eight teams in the league. <laughs> like, we're Celtics fans talking about this. Like, I can't listen to old heads, like, talk about basketball. Because, like, who's that dude that was on a... Uh, First team receiving it. Yeah, he said Bob Cousy is like <laughs> the same type of player as like Steph Curry. Like Dude, JJ Redick shredded him. He's like, yeah, he's playing against plumbers and he friggin' was, bro. didn't even have a left Fire hand. Fire. He was greater than Sam Jones already. Yeah. Think, how many, uh, rings, how many do, rings did Sam Jones? Do you think Tatum is better than Paul Pierce all the time? Like as like Celtics wise. Uh, if he wins, the, if he wins this yeah. ring, if, if he, he wins this ring, ring yes, oh yes, God, yeah. yes, oh my God, yes. Yeah. Oh, this cool. is such like a meme. This last yeah. week on, that. he was on a segment with uh, Chauncey Billups and uh, Michelle Beagle, and they were asking him like, "Who's better all the time, D Wade or like you?" He's like, "That's easy, that's me, dude." <laughs> oh, like, oh, man, dude. oh, and then, oh. And then he was like, D-Wade and then, is a top and then, and then right? they asked him, "There was like, who's the better wing shooter, you or Clay Thompson?" He's like, "That's easy." Oh, you're tripping. No, Paul Pierce is a tripping. No, no. Yeah. Dude. Paul Pierce is a meme. He's just, I, yeah, like, I think he, I don't think he's being serious. He's just full of himself, that's dude. Why he's so full of himself. Ring, he's better than Paul Pierce as a consultant. Yeah, uh, but that's a, bad, that's a valid I'm point. I'm not going to say he's better than, like, Doro so as a consultant. Isn't that kind of extreme? <laughs> that's really, <laughs> like, extreme, but, like, I don't... You wouldn't be mad at me I if I... Uh, I'd probably so jack that argument. I'd probably be like, hell yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah I could see you doing that. But, like, it's not, it's not a bad argument, and I think... Not the person, like, I think, the person that picks respect. Tatum, if they win the ring, I think the person that picks Tatum has a better point than the person that picks if Paul Tatum. If Tatum wins the ring, he's top five. Oh my god, no, I don't. If I think top, three. top if five, Tatum, something of all time. No, 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 like top five in the league. I think yeah, might be top five mm. league now. I think Tatum with the ring, there's no doubt he's better than Paul Pierce as a Celtic. Yeah, he, I like, agree. He's already done it. Like it took Paul Pierce to have a super team to do it. Like this team that they have now was drafted. Like Danny Ainge drafted this team. Yeah, and like. If they get their first championship this year, which I'm like praying to God, Ainge really drafted that they this whole do. Now, you, you think about it, it was Tatum, Brown, Grant, Rob, Rob Smart, Pritchard, smart too. Pritchard, yeah. yeah. Jesus, that's the like, only people that we traded for are like Al Horford, White. And White like, I think. Do you think? Uh, but I think that that mid season trade with. To get Derek White and to get Daniel Tice back, Daniel Tice doesn't really even like play that much. But to have, but to get rid of, to get rid of Josh Richardson and Schroeder, not that they were cancers, but they didn't do anything. Nah, they didn't help they the just, team. I mean, when we Derek first White traded, was a huge we, help. When we first traded for White, I was like, damn, like we gave up Josh and Schroeder basically for White. It's like, I don't know, I don't know how I like that. But like as the season going on, like the playoffs, like he's played great. Like it was a great trade. We saw Jay Rich drop twenty five or like we're close yeah, to thirty. Yeah, we went to that game oh. where Lamelo dropped his career high in the Garden and. Um, our leading scorer was Josh Richardson. So, like, at the time, like, when they made, like, that trade, I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> but, like, White just helps our offense, and he's, like, another ball handler. Like, the team really doesn't, like... I think Marcus Smart has made the jump to be, like, a true point guard, but he's really not. He's yeah. a two guard, yeah. when you think about it. Even though he can't shoot, but yeah. So, yeah, do you yeah, think do you like think that... Defensive lockdown, like, wing two guard like that's his like main position but he's made that transition but white gives us that extra ball handler mm-hmm. that we kind of need to take the ball out of tatum and brown's hands do you think so, so i think white will play big in like the warriors series right too. after the season regardless of like who wins i i think the celtics can be title contenders for like years to come but do you think that they should pick up a like a true point guard like i know you guys leaned towards Dejounte murray a I lot love that but like like you just said, smart smart could play the two guard, and and that wouldn't be a bad decision for the Celtics. But what would you give up in order to get? I don't that? even know about this year. I think we would roll with the same squad yeah. this year that we go the following year. You're year. Saying, like I think we pick up like, like a bench player, like a shooter off the bench. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't think anything major because yeah, the East next year is going to be strong. You got the Sixers. Who knows? Like Chris gonna Middleton's going like, to come back. Nets, like yeah. the Bucks are going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Like I think the East is like pretty like good. I think we're even the Heat. Like, we're a top five team in the East, like, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And like, we made it to the finals this year. I don't think next year we're going to go into it like, yeah, okay, let's trade for a guy. I think we'll get some, like, minor pieces. But I think yeah. if next year doesn't go well, then they'll think about, like, okay, Al Horford will be, like, 37. Yeah, it'll be okay. old. Like, I was going to say that, like, Al is getting, like, towards the end of his career. He looks great. Such a Celtic. Like, whatever. Like, what it means to be a Celtic, like, that guy embodies. Like, he just plays hard 48 minutes. He's always, like... 
diving for loose balls. He's always, like, hype. He's into the game. He shows raw emotion. Like, love that guy. But he is getting old. So, like, when his tr- contract goes, they got to look to add another piece. And it's probably going to have to be a big because you're going to have smart Tatum and Brown. It has to be a big because, like, Rob Williams. Or Rob Williams. Okay, yeah, 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 He stays okay. healthy and he develops. I think we don't yeah. need another four. Good. I think Grant in uh, three yeah. years should probably be, like, an evolved player. Like, I think Grant, Grant, I think can, Grant okay. can play, like, the Draymond Green role for us. He's you're right. in the third yeah. season. Like, that's yeah. perfect. And he has a better shot than Draymond mm-hmm. Green. Yeah, so. that's why, like, I love the Celtics team. They're very young. Like, they have a chance to do something great. But they can continue that. Yeah. Like they they can do something great this year and then turn it into something even greater. Yeah. Because they're very young. They can continue to develop. So if Al Horford does, like, retire or he doesn't, like, play, like, the pivotal minutes that he does now, then I think they go out and get an extra piece, whether that be a point guard or maybe, like, an athletic, like, wing player at the four, like, a long, like lengthy, like, defender that can maybe space the floor. That would probably, like, add depth to the team, like, something like that. But I don't see them making any moves like soon. Probably not in the year. But like you got to think, the, someone on the Jazz is gone. It's probably not going to be Gobert because Donovan Mitchell has been in trade talks the whole time. But like, listen. But listen, no, I'm not Gobert. talking about the Celtics. I'm talking about the Heat. The Miami Heat is one of Donovan Mitchell's like main landing points. Mm-hmm. So that just makes the Heat that much better next year. And you don't know how they're going to gel, and you don't know how the chemistry is going to be. But. You just look at it on paper, Jimmy Jimmy Butler, Donovan Mitchell, like and the team that they had, with, you know, all the the role guys, Struess, Lowry. I mean, I don't like Kyle Lowry. Definitely but. work, but like, like, like you said, looking at it on paper, you trade like you take out Kyle Lowry, fat ass, and then you put in Donovan Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, like that gets a lot scarier. Exactly, and like with um, what was I gonna say? The, Celt- the Celtic situation, like you just have to, like you said, you got to wait till what next year. Like plant pans out, and I think you don't even have to worry about that now. I'm not worried about until you right now. So that yeah. that brings us into like the last <laughs> final thing we're gonna talk about is your like your true prediction, like you right. what you really think is gonna happen in this finals like series. And like we'll start with you guys because I'll, I'll get right, my I'll Celtics in four, bitch. <laughs> All right, no, actually, yeah, I, it's it's a joke. Nah, I'll go. Yeah. Um, I think we like I said earlier, like we match up very well versus them. Um, I think if we play at our best and they play at their best, I think our best can be better than theirs if we don't go ISO in the half court like we are prone to. Um, I think if we don't split the first two games, then we probably won't win the series. So I think if we split, like I see this maybe getting one on the at home after that. Like I see this going seven games, just like no matter what. Yeah. So obviously I'm going to go with like the Celtics because I want to see us win. But obviously I'm – prone to the fact that, like, I know what this team can do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my final prediction is Celtics and 7. I don't, I don't hate that. I like that. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's pretty clear to, like, who we're going to pick. So, like, Warriors and 5. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck that. Um, what did that happen? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, literally. <laughs> no, I don't see the Celtics. I don't see this series going any less than six games. Like, I don't see this ending in four. No. It's not going to be a sweep. I don't see this ending in five. Like, I think both teams are just way too good for that to happen. Like, I don't think one team is going to dominate the series that much. I think the games are going to be very competitive. I think it makes for a very fun finals to watch because, like, one, it's something new. Like, yeah, the Warriors are there. We're used to the Warriors. But, like, you have... Boston. Like, Has uh, it been NBA, there since 2010? Yeah, like, you have, like, an NBA dynasty that's been, like, forged and been around for I don't even know how long. And like the Steve Kerr era, you have the team, the one team in the NBA that's actually has a winning record against this team. So like, it's could be like, it's basically David versus Goliath when you think about it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like the Celtics could start their own dynasty with a win in this series. Yeah. It's about how much they want it. Yeah. And how much they want to be great. And I really do believe like Tatum Brown. All the guys in that locker room are bought into the fact that, like, we can do something special, Mm -hmm. which is, like, I'm excited for it. I think the Warriors are going to be ready. I think they're going to be on their A game. With all that being said, I believe the series is going to go Celtics in six in the Garden. Okay, see. They win it at home in the Garden off of, like, I think the series goes 2-2. I think they split both ways. I think they go in game five with, like, the kind of that desperate mentality where, like, we need this win to, like, really 
jump ahead in the series. And instead of what they did versus Miami, I think they learned from their mistakes where they let Miami back into the series, like losing game six. I think they correct their flaws and they close it out there. What I, I don't hate either take because like I want the Celtics to win too. And coming from a Knicks fan, like people like always ask me like, why are you rooting for the Celtics? Why are you rooting for the Celtics? I, I'm a I'm a fan of like the mentality that they have. Like they're like they're dogs. Like that's like the definite like they, they fight and they, they work hard to get it's with Boston, that. Baby. And like Boston. Yeah, come on. Like Celtics on the balls. And, yeah. Come on. And, and just like just to see I always say it all I always say it all the time. Just to see Joe like where he is. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It it, it it really I I texted him the other day. So I texted him the other day and he actually like got back to me and yeah. um he was like, Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It like this really does mean a lot, like to reach out and he said, Talk soon. And to just to have that connection with him and just to like go back on Camp's corner and see like he was like my first he was my first guest. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to see the best for him. And for him to be involved with the team that's that hasn't been to a finals in ten or uh, since two thousand ten and just to work, work their way up and build themselves up to where they're at now, I think is what I'm like cheering for the most is for yeah. him too. But the team as a whole, because like I just said, like I love Jason Tatum. I love watching Jason Tatum. I, I do like Fun Brown. I like Marcus Smart. Like mm-hmm. Rob Will is going to be one of the best centers in the league if he keep you know he's got to definitely continue to play. Exactly, yeah. and he's still he young. But w- what I would say for like my prediction, it's either going to go six before, or seven. Before you make your prediction, can I just like going back to Joey? I think that speaks volumes about him as a person, and like, of course it does. And like, you saw the last few games; he's been on the sidelines, like getting up. Like, oh yeah, like I think he gets a lot of his coaching style from Dan. Like you can yeah. kind of see, like he he's very loud. He's like aware of what's going on. He knows where to put guys in certain situations. He's always up. He's energetic, all that. But I think it speaks volumes to who he is as a person and like the kind of person he is. That the fact that he can still be under all this pressure and be in a situation where like some of us would like dream to be in but can still realize where he came from and get like take the time to just get back to you and like send a simple text like it means a lot yeah like, it, it, really, it meant a lot to me dude yeah. like i didn't think i was gonna hear back from him and he i got back he got back in a couple hours and i was at work and i was like oh my god like, he texted back i was yeah, like it, it's just cool it's like inspiring you know how like yeah you know you said like like the stuff i do with the podcast inspiring like it he's does, a true insp- you know he's a true inspiration and that's yeah. that's why like seeing anybody working towards their craft and like really pushing towards it and not caring about like outside noise is really like you, like you can take inspiration from anywhere but i think something like that is very like motivating definitely and yeah. you know kind of close everything off i'll give my prediction i'll give some back to it but Celtics and seven, baby. Gonna bang, bang the drum all day, baby. Like Zolak and Bertrand, baby. Bang the drum, baby. But like, like you said, I do think they split, regardless if they if they're down two nothing. If they if they take one on the road, it just it plays into their advantage. Like it's just that much more to their advantage if they take one on the road in Golden State. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but yeah, like I said, mm-hmm. Celtics and seven. Bang that drum, baby. We're coming for Golden State, and I don't care, Knicks fan or not. You know my backstory. It's on. all about the Boston culture. Yep. Like yeah, you're around about. it every day. You see it. We're just everyone's hungry, but um, starving. Of course. So, starving. anything you guys want to close out? Closing remark, Jay. Any, any closing remarks before uh, Game Seven tonight? Because that's when this is gonna come out. It's gonna come out. Oh yeah. Thursday. Um. Obviously, it's not here yet. But for Game One, um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I really don't. Um. Well, I probably bet on this game for Celtics probably because like, I want us <laughs> to win. So um. <laughs> That plus play. three and a half is looking juicy. Look Might have to hammer that. If I lose that, double down on game two. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're going to split and uh, see what happens. Tom, any closing remarks before game game one of the NBA Finals? Let me just say, I thought that was very inspiring by Jason Canton. If you lose like, one, double down. Fact. You'll um, never lose in life. He's like, he's a certified sports gambling GOAT. Like He's been in the game. He does this. Well, used to. No, I'm uh, yeah, but like, from the game. Take, little, yeah, take, little take advice while you can. Yep. This man was once like a genius, and I still believe in every word he says. Yep. But closing remarks, um, let's see. Uh, Boston's the balls. <laughs> that's it. Celtics and six, and that's it. <laughs> no better way to end off the show. So I'm just kidding. Don't win in four, please. <laughs> please. That'll do it for episode eight, I think, now of season two. That's like 30-something episodes of Camp's Corner. This thing's just flying by. Got a 
great treat for the next episode coming next week. The very special guest that's outside of the sports realm. Uh, you guys will hear about that very, very soon. Stay Go like, like, guys. subscribe, follow all platforms. And, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And, yeah, go Celtics. Bang that drum, baby.